Hello everyone, welcome to the Grace Filled Journey. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. As you can see by the title, we're gonna be talking about my faith journey, my testimony. Let's just jump right into the video. So to start off, I was raised Catholic. I was baptized as a baby. And so with that came communion, first communion, confirmation, all of the sorts. And you know, I just, knew that I had to follow God. I knew that he was the one God that my family worshiped and that he was the triune God and he has the Holy Spirit. I believed in the Trinity and all of that. But I was very much living my faith through my mom and I didn't really have a, you know, direction. And so of course that had me like living out in the world and following the advice of my friends who weren't worshiping God either and we all know where that could lead and so I began to party and drink and experiment with guys when I graduated high school and I was in college um, and that led down a very dark road I struggled with being a temptress. I struggled with lust and not only sexual lust, but material lust, material things. Um, and, you know, it was just a very dark path. I struggled with depression. I struggled with anxiety. I struggled with loneliness. I struggled with so much from the world. Um, you know, like when you go seek the world, that's what you will find. Like you're being foolish and you will only find foolish things. And this world is so temporary and it's not going to bring you what you're looking for. If you're looking for happiness, you're not going to find it in the world. It's very, very, very temporary. And it's not the joy that's everlasting. That's every single day that only Jesus can bring you. I graduated high school in 2015. Um, and then for three years after that, I was just living in the world, doing my thing, getting all of these, you know, soul ties, fornicating, and it was just not what I had envisioned for my life. And I was putting up a front as if I was like so innocent because my family and because like I didn't want to be labeled like my friends. I was so prideful. And it was very unfair and I see like where I went wrong with my friends because I was such a hypocrite. Up until 2018, I was in a toxic relationship. It was like a situationship. It wasn't like an official relationship. We were on like the DL, you know? We were doing stuff and I never felt good. And then one day I was in my bedroom feeling lonely. I had no more friends anymore. Um, cancel culture was real. I was just so lonely. I didn't have any, I always had plans. Like every single day I had plans. And this was a day where I woke up. I had no one to text, no one to talk to. My mom was working. I was home alone. Um, and I was in my bedroom and I was feeling like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no friends, no plans. And I woke up and I was like, I don't want to be here right now. Like, there was no purpose for me. I had no purpose, no direction. And so I got on YouTube and I was like, how do you deal with a relationship? And so when I was looking at it, an online church that popped up, and it was a sermon series. And so it was so smart that this online church had labeled it as like that hot topic. And it was a church talking about it. So I was like, what is this? Like I had never searched up a church before. I had never searched up anything about Jesus, nothing. Like I was not into that. Like I was like, I had accepted that I was just gonna face judgment the day that I died. And you know, like that's it. Like I had no relationship with God. Sure enough, I clicked on it because I was so intrigued by the title. And it was that day that I was feeling so lonely, so depressed, so without a purpose. And I felt like I needed a man to tell me how to be loved, show me how to be loved. 
when I wasn't even loving myself. That day I had given my life to Christ in my bedroom, on my bed, with my hands lifted high. I gave my life to Christ that day. And since that day, that same day, I had broken it off with my situationship and I was like, this isn't working out. We gotta stop it. Thanks for the experience, have a good life. And so I broke it off, he didn't understand. I made a, a promise that the next guy that I would, I would be with, I was gonna marry him. A month later, I got into another relationship. And of course, because when you give your life to Christ, you, you have like spiritual battles. And I didn't know I was going through like spiritual warfare or anything. Like I thought that this was still normal what I was going through. But praise God for his grace and patience and his Holy Spirit that teaches us, guides us, disciplines us, convicts us. Because without that, I still would have been the same person. And so I was in that relationship for a year, fornicating, still doing the stuff that I knew I shouldn't be doing. But this time it was different because every time I did it, I felt the shame. I didn't feel like I, it was me. I felt like I was doing something wrong. Like I felt the shame attached to it and I felt dirty. And I was like, God, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I want to live a life for you. I don't want to be chained to this relationship that if I don't give it up, they're going to leave me. And that's exactly what it was. Because I had, I, I, I had been open about it and I said like I don't want to do it but like stuff still happened and so this person they you know like they didn't know better they didn't know like what it looked like to walk in a relationship that was godly like they didn't practice so it made no sense to them and so how could I still be with a person like that if they don't understand my vision and you know like they're gonna have to live it out and walk it out themselves and so I got the courage enough which was the hardest thing in the world to break off that relationship in 2019. So I was with that person for a year, broke it off in 2019, praise God. I prayed for him, that person ended up getting saved. Thank God, I don't know where he is now, but God bless him. I hope that he's still on his walk with the Lord. After I broke up with him, I had made a promise to God that not the next person, but I'm going to be celibate up until my marriage. And I struggled. I struggled with like purity. And after that, I struggled with shame. And it was really hard to not get caught up in that and like what I did. I struggled with shame for a very long time up until I got baptized. And I got baptized this September. And I no longer struggle with shame. I no longer struggle with the chains of, you know, being chained to the world. Praise God. God, now I can walk in full joy and freedom that he provides. I was fighting it every single day. Every single day, it was a constant battle. It was very inconsistent. It was only when I wanted to share the gospel that that shame came out. 2019, 2020, I was learning about Christ. 2021, I met my husband. 2022, we got engaged. 2023, we got married. And in September of 2023, this past September, I got baptized. But when I got baptized, I felt so relieved. I felt like a new creation. I felt like I was born again. And like, I understand what people mean now. Like, I, I do believe that baptism is so necessary to break the chains of shame from your past. Yes, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, but water baptism is also so necessary. But that is in this video that I emphasize that. So please click on this video and I will go into more depth about that. But praise God that he lifted me from the depths of hell. And I was a temptress. I was lustful. I was, you know, greedy and financially like, you know, I wanted more money, more money. I thought that was it. I put my faith in men. I put my love in men. I put my worth in men. I put my worth in friendships. I listen to these friends and they, you know, because of my foolishness, I fell really hard. But God, God pursued me. If God is pursuing you, if God is calling you, you are going to feel it. It's not like 
you feel guilty or dirty about anything. No, that's God telling you, I want to make you pure. I want you to be living the purest life with me. Like that is God calling you. And it's the same exact thing that he did for me when I thought there was no way. He can do it for you. Amen. God will wash you clean. If you believe in Jesus Christ and what he did for you, he was the ultimate lamb and sacrifice for you specifically watching this video. God put this video in your midst to call you to him so that you would no longer be chained to the world and what the world standards are and what social media portrays as a perfect relationship or what social media portray portrays as a perfect friendship. No, it is God that created this and he knows best for your life. He is calling you. So I'm going to leave you with a scripture that I think is so beautiful on how you know, we can live a shameless and blameless life because of God and how he saves us and his loving mercy. It's Psalm 18, 20 to 24. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocence. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not turned from my God to follow evil. I have followed all his regulations. I have never abandoned his decrees. I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He has seen my innocence. He is calling you in your impurity. What God would want to call you when you're dirty? All these other religions are different because you have to live out a right life in order for them to want to be in relationship with you. But God is literally calling you when you're not living right, when you're not living pure, so that you can live a blameless, shameless, pure relationship with him if you are walking in his decrees and if you are, you know, repenting from sin. It's not about living being perfect like Jesus, right? It's progressing towards that, but we are never going to stop sinning. He does not continue to have wrath upon your life. If you're repenting from that sin every day, he is going to provide help for you. The spirit is going to guide you and lead you and he will not forsake you. He will save you. You are being called in the state that you're in right now. It's like he raised Lazarus from the dead, like he raised me from the dead. He will raise you from the dead and he is calling you specifically to be given a new life so that you may be able to no longer live in the chains that the world tells you that you have to live in, but instead in the creation that God created in the fullness of the purpose that he has for you. God bless you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this video provided some light and insight into your walk with Jesus. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you when I see you. Remember to live a grace filled journey, you guys. God bless you and I hope I see you again. Bye.